Hello and welcome, dear friends. You are watching the Iglesia Ni Cristo and the Bible. The crisis that has been crippling many people in different parts of the world today due to the COVID-19 virus has aggravated the difficulties many are experiencing because of poverty, violence, calamities, and the like. The governments of various nations have been trying to solve these things, but the situation continues to get worse. Friends, we don't find it surprising because these things that are happening are among the signs foretold. They signify that the end is near. So the executive minister of the Church of Christ, Brother Eduardo Manalo, he's making every effort to ensure that we members of the Church of Christ are always taught God's will for us to overcome all the problems as well as the trials that we are now going through. But dear friends, how can we overcome the heavy problems we face so we will reach our goal as members of the Church of Christ. So, Brother Ed, will let us ask this question. What does the Bible teach us when life becomes extremely difficult? Well, to answer that question, let us begin our discussion by going first to the Apostle Peter. And this is what he says. Dear friends, here in 1 Peter 4, the verses are 12 down to verse 13. Friends, when life gets really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. Instead, be glad that you are in the very thick of what Christ experienced. This is a spiritual refining process with glory just around the corner. Dear friends, isn't this the life situation of people in our time? Life has become really very difficult. But how should we face the hardship that we experience? If that is our situation in life, we should not jump to the conclusion that the Lord God isn't on the job, that the Lord God is doing nothing. Instead, how should we face our severe problems? As the Apostle Peter tells us, be glad. Now, you might be asking, why should I be glad? Because as he continued to teach us, through it, we are in the very thick of what the Lord Jesus Christ experienced. Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the one true church. And we who are members of the church of Christ, we are members of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Very well said, Brother Edwell. And our dear friends and our dear brethren who are listening to us right now, it is only right that as members of the church of Christ, we greatly share or be in the very thick of the sufferings the Lord Jesus Christ experienced. Now, were these things that happened to our Lord Jesus Christ merely incidental or something that just happened in His life? No, our Lord God really allowed those things to happen for the members of the Church of Christ to be covered by His act of redemption. In fact, as the Apostle Peter said, this is a spiritual refining process. Now, Brother Ed will let us ask this question. After being refined through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and the things that members of the church are going through as trials, what can members of the church be certain of? Well, they, the members of the Church of Christ, are certain of receiving glory. And if you notice, dear friends, that glory was described by the Apostle Peter as just being around the corner. In other words, it's very near. So, Church of Christ members should not grow weak. There's no reason to grow weak. Church of Christ members should not lose hope. Again, there's no reason for that. When life becomes very difficult, really difficult, we know that glory, the glory mentioned in the Holy Scriptures, that's just around the corner. It's very near. Now, Brother Edwin, why should members of the church understand when life becomes very difficult or kind of very hard to bear, that they should not lose hope. Instead, they should understand that they are going through a spiritual refining process for them to receive the glory that is just around the corner. Well, the answer to that question, again, is found in the Holy Scriptures. And let's share that with those watching us right now. Dear friends, the reason is because the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, based on what the Apostle Peter teaches us, He gave us an example that we should follow. And that's recorded again in 1 Peter. This time, let me read to you chapter 2, the verses are 21 down to 23. This suffering is all part of the work God has given you. Christ, who suffered for you, is your example. Follow in His steps. He never sinned, never told a lie, never answered back when insulted. When He suffered, 
He did not threaten to get even. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. We hope you notice the Apostle Peter said that the sufferings we encounter are all part of the work God has given us, members of the true church of Christ. Now, you may be asking, why is that? Well, based again on what the Apostle Peter said, it's because we will really go through those things. However, we hope you noticed. How should Church of Christ members face them? By having the Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered for the members of His church, as the example we should follow. That is correct, Brother Edwell. And to our dear viewers and to our dear brethren, what are members of the Church of Christ therefore commanded to do? Based on what Apostle Peter said, we must follow in His steps. And what steps did our Lord Jesus Christ take which we should follow? He never sinned, never told a lie, never answered back when insulted. When He suffered, He did not threaten to get even. And that is also what Church of Christ members should do. When encountering severe problems, do not be upset. Don't step down or quit from loving the Lord God or fulfilling the duty given by our Almighty God. Don't walk away. Don't draw back. Instead, Church of Christ members should uphold their duties. And our Lord Jesus Christ did not do any negative thing despite the extreme difficulties He experienced in His life. He was corned. He was crucified. He was harshly persecuted. And Brother Edwell, how was our Lord Jesus Christ able to overcome all of those things? Well, based on the testimony of the Apostle Peter, the Lord Jesus Christ, He left His case, as we read earlier, He left His case in the hands of our Lord God. And how is the Lord God described by the Apostle Peter? What we read said, God always judges fairly. So, notice that. The Lord Jesus Christ knew that the Lord God is fair, the Lord God is just, and that the Lord God would not forsake Him. And based on our readings of the Holy Scriptures, that's exactly, that's precisely what happened. So, if we're going through such fierce trials, let's follow the Lord Jesus Christ's example. And we can be sure that the Lord God will never forsake us, the members of the true church. Let's remember that when we are going through, or rather what we're going through, is a spiritual refining process. That's how the Bible describes it. And so this will refine, this will purify us. And after we've been purified, well, we know for sure we will receive, we will partake of the glory promised to the members of God's nation. And after being purified, Brother Edwell, and made worthy because of the spiritual refining process that we are going through, what is the promised glory that members of the church will be certain of receiving? I'm sure that those watching us right now are asking the same question. And we can read about that glory let me read it to you here in Isaiah this time. 65, the verses are 17 down to verse 19. Pay close attention now. I'm creating new heavens and a new earth. All the earlier troubles, chaos, and pain are things of the past to be forgotten. Look ahead with joy. Anticipate what I'm creating. I'll create Jerusalem as sheer joy, Create my people as pure delight. I'll take joy in Jerusalem. Take delight in my people. No more sounds of weeping in the city. No cries of anguish. We hope you notice the Lord God is creating a new heaven and a new earth. Now what's it like to live there in the new heaven and the new earth? All the earlier troubles, all the chaos, the pain are things of the past. The Bible tells us these are to be forgotten. All those things will be forgotten. We should not remember them. What then is the instruction to all of us? The Bible tells us, look ahead with joy. Now, you might be asking, what does that mean? Again, the Lord God said, anticipate what I'm creating. Why is that? Because the Lord God said, I'll create Jerusalem as sheer joy. That is right, Brother Edwell, and that is the hope of many members of the Church of Christ, which is why they are still joyful and they are strong in the faith, although they encounter extreme difficulties. And understand, dear friends, our dear viewers, unlike here in this world where you can be glad for a moment or even for a little more time, but can you be sure that you will always feel glad? No. 
there will always be that time when such gladness will disappear. But in the new heaven and earth that our Lord God is creating, there is sheer joy. That's not all. What else is there? Our Lord God also said, I'll create my people as pure delight. Why is the joy and delight in the new heaven and earth that our Lord God is creating described as sheer and pure? The Lord God further said, I'll take joy in Jerusalem, take delight in my people. Why? Because there will be no more sound of weeping in the city, no cries of anguish. Therefore, this is the solution to all the difficult things we experience in this world. And that is what we must make sure to reach. But Brother Edwell, the question is, who will we be able to reach that destination? It will be for those servants of the Lord God who will endure until the end. Dear friends, when we have problems, we should not have a negative outlook. Let's have faith that the Lord God will not forsake His true servants. If you're a true servant of the Lord God, have faith. God will help you. Because those who are true servants of the Lord God in these last days, members of the Church of Christ, they are parts, they are members of the Lord Jesus Christ. Very well said, Brother Edwell. So our dear brethren who are watching us today, as true Church of Christ members, we will never lose hope. We will never stop serving God and never do anything against His will. The church administration does not want any of us to fail to reach the holy city. The problem is, it is really difficult to live in this world. So, Brother Edwell, how will we be able to overcome the difficulties here in this world? We should not lose faith. It's as simple as that. That's the message to us of our lesson today. Don't lose faith in the Lord God. Never think that the Lord God is is not doing anything. He will help true members of the one true church of Christ. And again, why? Because they are his servants in these last days. However, what is it that church members need to do? We must learn to endure. We prove our faith by enduring, by continuing to be obedient. The Lord God will never abandon us. We will be able to make it to the end. We will receive what he has promised, the promised salvation on the day of judgment. So, Brother Ed, will come what may in our life, whatever we may encounter in this world, what should we firmly hold on to and believe in? Well, let me answer that by going back to what the Bible teaches. Dear friends, let's read what's recorded here in the book of Psalms, Psalm 37. Let me read the verses, are 23 down to 24. It describes what true servants of the Lord God must firmly believe in. The Lord guides us in the way we should go and protects those who please Him. If they fall, they will not stay down because the Lord will help them up. What should we all firmly believe in no matter what we encounter in this life? We should firmly believe that when it is God who guides us, we will surely not be harmed and we will not fall into error. Now, the problem with other people is that when they have a problem, they keep it to themselves when what they really need is the Lord God's help. Remember, there's a limit to what we know, no matter how educated a person is. We cannot say that we can do everything right all the time. That is one truth that we can observe, Brother Edwell, and our dear viewers, who will not fall into error whatever they encounter, because they will be taught the way they should go. Those who are guided by the Lord God. That is the important thing we must understand. Aside from guiding His true servants, what else did the Lord God promise them? He will protect them. He will grant them His protection. And when one is under God's protection, we will be saved from troubles and misfortune. So, Brother Ed, will let us ask this important question. Who will be guided by the Lord God? And to whom will our Lord God grant His protection? Well, they are the servants of the Lord God who please Him. And now, that's not my own opinion. That's based on, on what we read earlier to those who are watching us right now. Did you remember what we read to you, dear friends? The Lord guides us in the way we should go. The Lord God protects those who please Him. So, there is a condition that we must meet so that the Lord God will give us protection and guidance. We must be a part of God's nation, 
And in these last days, we've proven this so many times already from the Bible. God's nation is the church of Christ. As a member of the church of Christ, we must please the Lord God. Those who are members of the church of Christ will understand this very easily because we know that these are based on biblical truths taught to us by the church administration. Is the Lord God pleased with those who are inactive in the works or the activities of the church? We know God is not pleased with them. Those who easily get offended, that goes against what the Bible teaches. Those who do not love and love rather the brotherhood inside the church, we know the Bible teaches loving the brotherhood inside the church. Is the Lord God pleased with those who don't participate or help out in the work of propagation? Again, if you remember from our many studies of the Bible, we are taught to help by sharing our faith with others. Would the Lord God be pleased with those who refuse when they're being recruited, for example, to help as officers inside the church? Again, based on what the Bible teaches, we know that we should accept because these are gifts from the Lord God. Would the Lord God be pleased with us if our job, if our means of livelihood goes against the laws of man as well as the will of the Lord God? Again, the answer to that is a simple no. God is not pleased with such kinds of actions. Now ask yourself this, isn't the Lord God pleased with our heartfelt worship services? Even though we now hold these worship services in our respective homes, we know again, based on what the Bible teaches, the Lord God is pleased with our worship services. And that is why members of the Church of Christ, even though in their homes, they are also very dedicated in their worship services. And these worship services are heartfelt. Yes, we prepare for these worship services. And they also pray to our Lord God that our Almighty God will send the Holy Spirit for them to experience the strengthening that will be given by the Father in That's heaven. True. But Brother Edwell, what if, for example, the situation will become even worse, will become more severe? What can those who receive God's protection expect from the Lord God? Well, to answer that question, dear friends, if you noticed what we read earlier, the Bible says, if they fall, they will not stay down. Now, you might be asking, why is that? Again, this is not based on our own opinion. It's based on what's there in the Bible. It said very clearly, the Lord will help them up. Now, we've proven in many of our past studies of the Bible that the church to which we belong, the church of Christ, is the true religion. That's what the Bible teaches. So, this church will never be forsaken. It will continue to reap victories, but we need to understand based on what the Bible tells us. In order for God's abiding presence to remain with us, we have to do what the Lord God commands us to do. Dear friends, those who are not yet members of the Church of Christ, if you want to find out more about what the Lord God commands all of us to do, we invite you to continue studying God's words with us. Because if we are obedient to God's words as members of His nation, nothing is going to be impossible for us because God is going to be with us. That is correct, Brother Edwell. And our Lord God is almighty. Anything is possible unto Him. He can give the solution even to the biggest problem we may encounter. So let us get examples from the early servants of God, Brother Edwell. What did the ancient servant of God attest when they faced severe difficulties here in this life? How will servants of the Lord God receive the guidance and protection of our Father in heaven? Well, to answer that question, let's turn to what the Apostle Paul testified to. And this time, let me read what his testimony is as recorded in 2 Corinthians. Friends, here in chapter 4, the verses are 17 down to verse 18. We have small troubles for a while now, but they are helping us gain an eternal glory that is much greater than the troubles. We set our eyes not on what we see, but on what we cannot see. What we see will last only a short time, but what we cannot see will last forever. We hope you notice the testimony of the Apostle Paul. They experienced troubles for a while, but they did not lose hope. Why is that? Because instead of losing hope, they said that such troubles even help them gain an eternal glory that is much greater than the troubles they went through. Now, what is that eternal glory that they are referring to? It refers to the receiving of salvation. It refers to dwelling in the holy city. 
the life there is not the same as the life here on earth. Life here on earth is full of problems. We have worries. We have difficulties. But friends, God will make all of those troubles, all those worries and difficulties go away. And Brother Edwell, we hope that our dear friends and our dear viewers understand. How did the troubles help the first century Christians so they could carry on with their obligations to the Lord God? They said, we set our eyes not on what we see. Why did they do that? Because they said, what we see will last only a short time, but what we cannot see will last forever. Now, what are the things that we can see? The troubles, problems, and trials. Now, what are the things that we cannot see yet? The promises of the Lord God, that we will receive the holy city, where true members of the Church of Christ will enjoy everlasting life of bliss and happiness. There, they will experience, Brother Edwill, sheer joy and delight. And that's why when you talk to members of the Church of Christ, you'll notice that their outlook in life is very similar to what the Bible teaches us. That's correct. When there are difficult problems that arise in their lives, they don't focus on those problems. Rather, mm -hmm. they focus on the Lord God's promises to His true servants. And that's why I'd like to repeat this. When a severe problem comes, a true member of the Church of Christ, he sets his eyes not on the problem, but rather on God's promise. It's like someone who's been promised a high-paying job or work overseas. Although he has not yet reached the place, he feels as if he's there already. It's as if all his problems have faded away. Now, the one who made the promise to him is a human being, and yet that person to whom the promise was made, he already feels that way. As for us, remember, the one who promised us with salvation is none other than the Almighty Lord God. So that is what we should set our eyes on. That's what we should set our hope on, not the things that can be seen. Rather, in this way, we should always focus on what the Lord God said, because in that way, we can overcome all hindrances, and we will be certain of receiving all of God's promises to us. Very clearly said, Brother Edwell, and our dear friends, if you noticed, according to the Bible, the Lord God helped them because the troubles they experienced were only small, not grave. But what if the Lord God's chosen people will go through great or severe troubles? Now, Brother Edwell, will the Lord God stop helping them? Well, to answer that question, we again go back to what the Bible teaches. And let's take as an example what those early servants of the Lord God believed in. Because they believed that no matter how severe a problem was, the Lord God would not forsake them for as long as they pleased Him. Yes, now, sir. to prove that, let me read to you, dear friends, what's recorded here in the book of Psalms. Here in 124, the verses are 2 down to verse 6. What would have happened to us if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us? Our enemies would have swallowed us alive whenever they became angry at us. Our enemies' armies would have been like a flood washing over us like a river drowning us. Those proud people would have been like water rising up to our mouth and drowning us. Praise the Lord. The Lord did not let our enemies catch us and kill us. To be attacked by enemies? Well, that's not a small problem. Now, what made the situation worse for God's ancient people? They said, our enemies would have swallowed us alive whenever they became angry at us. Our enemies would have been like a flood washing over us. Now, what else happened? They said, those proud people would have been like water rising up to our mouth and drowning us. What God's chosen people encountered then was no joke, dear friends. Those were not small troubles. The things they encountered were so severe. However, despite all of those things, what did they do? They said, praise the Lord. What happened to them were extremely difficult, and yet they still praised the Lord God. Now, you might be asking, why did they do that? Because they testified to us the Lord God did not forsake them. Uh, Brother Ariel, uh, connecting that to what's happening right now, we, we know so many people, including members of the Church of Christ, yes, we're going through extreme difficulties. We're going through severe problems right now. And the pandemic, 
that's just one of those problems because all the other problems have not really disappeared. That's right, Peter. But as members of God's nation in these last days, we received a call from the executive minister, an exhortation from Brother Eduardo Manalo. No matter what happens, we continue with worshiping and praising the Lord God, just like the early servants of the Lord God did. We praise Him, we worship Him in our respective households. That is right, Brother Edwell, and we are very happy to see the, our brethren who are very reactive to the call of our executive minister. And when our executive minister also advises us to hold devotional prayers with our family, that is what every member of the Church of Christ also did. Now, dear friends, we would also want you to understand that the Church of Christ members also went through severe persecution by the enemies of our faith. In fact, they made use of social media, mass media, and even various governments to persecute the church. Now, if the Lord God had not helped us, those people might have succeeded in destroying the church. But the church has only grown bigger and stronger and continues to spread. In fact, it is now in 158 countries and territories around the world. And that's because, as we proved to you from the Bible in many of our past studies, this is the work of the Lord God. God is only fulfilling, even now in our time, the promise He gave to the messenger, Brother Felix Y. Manalo, that He will not forsake this mission. The reason we have been able to uphold the works of the Lord we ought to fulfill is that He has been helping each and every one of us. But we'd like to remind the members of the Church of Christ watching us right now, that those promises are not only for the church, it is also entirely for every individual member of the Church of Christ. The Lord God also promised that He will not forsake us in time of need. However, Brother Edwell, what do we need to do to receive this promise of God? As members of the Church of Christ, we need to always do what pleases the Lord God Almighty. We always need to prove that we believe in Him, we trust in Him, we have faith in Him. Dear friends, those of us who are members of the Church of Christ, we're always taught to firmly believe in the Lord God, to hold on tightly to our divine election. So, to the members of the Church of Christ out there watching us right now, let's put our hope, let's put our trust in the Lord God Almighty so that He will help. He will not forsake us and we will be able to carry on with our services to Him until the end and we will be able to overcome the problems that we are now experiencing. That is true, Brother Edwell. And there are a lot of blessings from the Lord God that He has in store because of our membership in the Church of Christ. So what should members of the church do for them to benefit from the blessing of being a member of the church? That's a very important question and we need to answer that from the Holy Scriptures. Yes, right. We now turn again to what the Apostle Paul testified to. Let me read to you 2 Corinthians this time. Here in chapter 13, the verse is verse 5. Test yourselves to make sure you are solid in the faith. Don't drift along taking everything for granted. Give yourselves regular checkups. You need first-hand evidence, not mere hearsay, that Jesus Christ is in you. Test it out. If you fail the test, do something about it. What are Church of Christ members commanded to do? We are commanded to test ourselves if we are solid in the faith. This is a commandment, so we need to fulfill it. It's easy for a person to say, well, I'm a member of the Church of Christ. I already have faith. But the question is this, as a member of the true Church of Christ, is his faith really solid as the Bible requires us? And that is what we must always reflect on, Brother Edwell. And our dear brethren who are watching right now, why are we commanded to test ourselves? Because there might be those who are just drifting along, taking everything for granted. They merely go with the flow. We must not be complacent, dear brethren. Church of Christ members must make sure that we are solid in the faith. Now, why is that? Because we need first-hand evidence, not mere hearsay, that the Lord Jesus Christ is in us. Now, why should we make sure that the Lord Jesus Christ is in us? Now, Brother Edwin, how important is it that we are sure that Christ is with us? Well, we need to remember, 
for one thing, the Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the church, mm -hmm. and we are members of the church. We're members of His body. Yes, right. The second thing we need to always remember is that the Lord Jesus Christ, He suffered for our sakes. Yes. We would not be... We would not have the hope of salvation if not for what the Lord Jesus Christ went through for our sakes. Now, to prove that, let me read to you what's recorded here in Hebrews this time. Four, that's the chapter. The verses are 14 down to verse 16. Inasmuch then as we believers have a great high priest who has already ascended and passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession of faith and cling tenaciously to our absolute trust in Him as Savior. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand our weaknesses and temptations, but one who has been tempted, knowing exactly how it feels to be human in every respect as we are, yet without committing any sin. Therefore, let us with privilege approach the throne of grace, that is, the throne of God's gracious favor, with confidence and without fear, so that we may receive mercy for our failures and find His amazing grace to help in time of need, an appropriate blessing coming just at the right moment. We know that the Lord Jesus Christ went through severe trials and persecutions, but He was able to uphold what He must fulfill. The Lord Jesus Christ, He did not commit any mistake. He did not commit any sin. What we feel when we go through trials it what, is what He also felt. Because He is like us. The Lord Jesus Christ is a human being. The Bible doesn't teach that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord God. The God whom the Lord Jesus Christ recognizes is none other than the Father in heaven. And we inside the church of Christ, we firmly believe that because that's what the Bible teaches. The Father is the only true Lord God. Now, we've discussed that from the Bible so many times already. What is the instruction of the apostles to members of the church? Those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as well as in the Father, the only true Lord God? Based on what we read to you, Therefore, let us with privilege approach the throne of grace. That is, the throne of God's gracious favor. That's a privilege given to members of the church of Christ. How should we approach the Lord Jesus Christ? As members of the church, let's approach Him with confidence, without fear, so that we may receive mercy for our failures. That's how important the Lord Jesus Christ is to members of the church of Christ. When He is with us, we will receive mercy for all our failures, for the sins that we have committed. And that is also the reason, Brother Edwell, why members of the church also want their loved ones and friends who are not yet members to join us in the Church of Christ to receive the great blessings and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord God. So our dear viewers, what else will members of the Church of Christ receive when they are true to their services? His amazing grace, the blessings from our Lord Jesus Christ, the help that we need in time of difficulties and trials. Therefore, as members of the church, we must make sure that the Lord Jesus Christ is in us. Our faith will not be solid if He is not in our lives because only the Lord Jesus Christ can help us ask all our needs from the Father in heaven. That is why... Church of Christ members also pray to the Lord Jesus Christ so He will draw us near to God along with our needs. But Brother Ed, will let us ask this important question, who is the member of the church who will be solid in the faith? Well, those who are solid in the faith are described by the Apostle Paul. And what his description is, is recorded in the book of Colossians. Let me read Colossians 1, the verse is 23. If you are indeed continuing in the faith, deeply rooted, unflinching, fixed in your direction, and are not allowing yourselves to be seduced and led away from the hope that came to you when you heard and accepted the great news, this great news of which I was made a messenger has now been proclaimed to everyone throughout the whole world. A church member who has solid faith 
And that's the member who continues and does not stop, does not lose faith, does not weaken in the faith. Now, who's the Church of Christ member who will be able to do this? The Bible tells us they are those who are deeply rooted. And who are they? Again, the description of them is they are unflinching. How else are they described? They are fixed in their direction. So, Church of Christ members who are solid in the faith do not allow themselves to be seduced, to be led away from the hope that came to them when they heard the great news. So, to those who are watching us right now, we'd like to point out that even the early servants of the Lord God, they understood God's servants have spiritual enemies. And what our spiritual enemies want is to lead us away from the true faith. That's why they deceive. They tell lies to seduce us, to lead us away from our hope for salvation. Why are members of the Church of Christ expected to continue solid in the faith, deeply rooted, unflinching, fixed in our direction, not allowing ourselves to be seduced, not allowing ourselves to be led away? We read earlier what the Apostle Paul said, This great news of which I was made a messenger has now been proclaimed to everyone throughout the whole world. Based on our many studies of the Bible in the past, the messenger of the Lord God is the instrument of the Lord God in conveying His pure words to people. And Brother Edwill, our dear friends, hopefully will understand that not all those who claim to preach have the right to preach the words of our Almighty God. In fact, it is only God's messenger because He is the one whom our Lord God commanded to preach and proclaim His words to people. And that is what we received as members of the Church of Christ. Our faith is true, dear brethren, and genuine. Now, dear brethren, in the Church of Christ, that's what we must have faith in. We must not allow our faith to weaken so that the Lord God will help us and Brother Ed will for us to remain in the love of our Lord God. And we, we hope those watching us right now, especially those who are truly interested in doing what they need to do to be pleasing in the sight of the Lord God, we hope they understand our journey in this life, in this world, it's not going to become easier yes, with the right. passing of time. Dear friends, our journey in this life will not get easier in the times ahead. The Lord God has forewarned that already. That's in the Bible. Indeed, this world is nearing its end, and we all need the Lord God's help to overcome all things. However, we must not worry. We must not be discouraged. We must not lose hope, no matter how difficult the journey is. Because based on what we already read to you from the Holy Scriptures, the Lord God is ready to help all of us for as long as we are members true members of the true nation of the Lord God in these last days. So, Brother Edwin, what should we implore or beg unto our Almighty God? Since our life here in this world will only get worse, will not get any better. Well, we should ask the Lord God for what the earlier servants of the Lord God asked of Him when they were going through very difficult times. And we can read of one such example here again. Let me read to you from the Holy Scriptures. In the book of Psalms, let me read Psalm 86, the verses are 1 to 2, and then let me also read to you verses 6 to 7, as well as verse 11, and then let me finish by reading to you verse 4. Lord, listen closely to me and answer me, because I am poor and in need. Guard my life, because I am faithful. Save your servant who trusts in you, you, my God. Listen closely to my prayer, Lord. Pay close attention to the sound of my requests for mercy. Whenever I am in trouble, I cry out to you because you will answer me. Teach me your way, Lord, so that I can walk in your truth. Make my heart focused only on honoring your name. Make your servant's life happy again because, my Lord, I offer my life to you. Many of us are in the same situation that these early servants of the Lord God experienced, suffering from hardships and in dire need. We call on everyone. We need to approach the true Lord God. We need to implore Him to listen to us and to answer us. Let's ask the Lord God, guard our lives because we are faithful. What else should we ask from Him? Let us beg the true Lord God to save us 
because we are His servants who trust in the Lord God. So to our fellow Church of Christ members, let us also never forget to ask the Lord God to forgive us because if a servant of God has committed sins, then those might get in the way of our Lord God listening to His prayers. What else should we ask from the Lord God? As this servant of the Lord God said, Make my heart focused only on honoring your name. Make your servant's life happy again because, my Lord, I offer my life to you. And to those who are not yet members of the Church of Christ, we invite you to join us. Let us honor the Lord God. When this great pandemic has run its course and we are able to once again worship in our chapels, we invite you to join us and give glory to the Lord God so He will bless us. And before we end our discussion, we ask you to join us in a prayer. Our most merciful, kind, and almighty Father in heaven. Yes, Lord God. As your servants, members of the Church of Christ. Yes, Lord. We praise, glorify, and magnify your most holy name. Yes, Lord. Yes, currently, dear Father, we are experiencing extraordinary hardships. Yes, Lord. But our conviction will remain. Yes, Lord. Come what may in our lives, we will worship you. Yes, Father. We will glorify you. Yes, Father. We will praise and magnify your most holy name. Amen. Even though we are holding our worship services at home, dear Father. Yes, Lord God. Our conviction and zeal and dedication will remain. Yes, Lord God. We will focus our hearts on you, dear Father. Yes, Lord God. We will glorify you come what may in our lives. Amen. And when this pandemic runs its course, dear Father. Yes, Lord. We will once again return to the house of worship. Yes, Father. We will pray unto you. Yes, Lord. We will praise your name and worship you, dear Father. Yes, Lord. And along with this, we are also begging you, may you allow our loved ones and friends who are not yet members in the church yes, to join us in our worship service, yes, Lord. giving glory unto your most holy name. Amen. May you also take good care of your nation in these last days. Amen. Be our protection, dear Father. Father, yes, Lord be God. our refuge yes, in Lord. this trying time, dear Lord. Yes, Lord. Continue to save the Church of Christ. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you. Yes, Lord. For you are the throne of grace. Yes, Lord. You are our mediator, dear Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. And as your servants, we are begging you, yes, continue Lord. to mediate our prayers to the Father. Yes, we Lord. have also committed sins and shortcomings. Yes, Lord. Dear Lord, may you ask our Father, Father, to grant us His mercy Amen. and the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Dear Father, as we continue to pray unto You, yes, we God. also pray for the church administration. Yes, they love the Church of Christ so much. Yes, they God. sacrifice a lot for the members of the church yes, so Lord that God. they will be certain of receiving salvation. Amen. May You continue to bless our executive minister. Amen. Continue to send Your power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue to guide him, dear Father, yes, so that he continues to guide the Church of Christ in these last days. Amen. We are firm in our conviction, dear Father, yes, Lord that God. you have heard our prayer. Yes, Lord we God. ask all of these in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.